All right, here we go. <clears throat> hey, everybody. We wanted to thank you all for being a part of this group. We really appreciate it. My name's Jody Franklin, and I know these are very trying times. And I just want to say that I think functional medicine is even more important nowadays than it ever was. And we all wanted to thank you guys those of you who are really on the front lines of this and give a shout out and we really appreciate everything you all have been doing. Um, but I wanted to bring on a few rock star um, practitioners today. Functional medicine has really helped me build a full practice and I have a wait list and I love it and it's been the best career move for me ever. But I wanted to bring on some people that also are in functional medicine that are um, have great practices and tell you how they got started and tell you how they built their practices and any advice they might want to give you all just to encourage you all because we need more people in functional medicine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you all briefly introduce yourselves. Um, go ahead, Lisa. Oh, great. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Vassal. I'm a nurse practitioner in Massachusetts. I own a functional medicine practice in Hopkinton, Mass. Start of the marathon, which won't be happening in a couple weeks. Mm. Um, and again, thank you all, um, anyone that's on the front line, anyone that's in the clinics, anyone that's in the hospitals, we cannot thank you enough. Our prayers are with you and your families and all your colleagues. Okay, Heather, you wanna go? Hi, I'm Heather Slusher and I own a brick and mortar um, practice here uh, just south of Tampa, Florida. Um, wanna thank everybody again for all that you are doing and we have been open as well, still uh, seeing patients um, the ones that we could not do by telemedicine. Um, so yeah, just uh, really credit um, School of Applied Functional Medicine with my knowledge and just being able to uh, have the confidence to open up my own practice here. It's really been a dream come true. That's great. How about you, Jean? Uh, yeah, so um, Jean Kelly, I'm a, um, I'm a pediatrician and I, um, I have a small consulting practice in pediatric functional medicine. Um, in uh, in Boston, um, but I also work as a primary care physician in a, an urban community health center, um, and I've been able to uh, really start to look at uh, primary care problems through a functional medicine lens, and it's been very, very, um, very helpful for me. Excellent. And how about you, Janet? I'm I'm merging. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Bad timing. Help. I'm Dana Flory. I'm an adult nurse practitioner in Medford, Massachusetts. Um, I'm providing primary care to um, patients in the office, and I'm integrating functional medicine into um, my daily visits with people. I don't have my own separate functional medicine practice, um, and I do send a shout out of love and support to all the people who are affected by this health pandemic. Um, I'm gonna get through this, but thank you for your time and energy and for your sanity as we go through a very, very challenging time. Thanks, well said, Janet. And I was wondering if you guys could just tell everybody how you are incorporating functional medicine in your practice. What did you do to get started with it and how did you how do you do it on a daily basis? How do you, how did you get started with that? So um, Lisa, you want to start? <laughs> uh, sure. So um, I've been a nurse for 30 years and a nurse practitioner for 15. And of those seven in functional medicine. So started out working um, really just health coaching on the side as a nurse. And then um, in just basically people that I worked with, uh, family members, people that were interested in having uh, maybe some ideas to help them lose weight or less headaches, sleep better. And then I just got more and more interested in it. I went back to school and, um, you know, as Heather said, School of Functional Medicine was one of them. I did IFM as well. Um, but what I found um, was that I, I wanted more information as to how to apply the information. Uh, the science is amazing in both schools. Um, but what I wanted was to really apply it. I started working in a functional medicine uh, slash primary care center I did both and it was great. Uh, it was incorporating it into the practice. Uh, some people were just primary care, others were uh, functional medicine and, and then they would make sure both. Um, and then about five years ago, opened my own brick and mortar practice for functional medicine uh, in not, no primary care. 
We also do about, I'd say 50% now, 100%, uh, which has kind of been nice uh, telemedicine. Uh, we co completely closed our practice and do 100% of telemedicine. Wow, and how has it compared to your previous practice? Just um... Well, um, as far as utilizing functional medicine, yeah. So um, primary care, you know, the thing is that I have nothing but respect for all of my colleagues who are in the, in the traditional world. Um, what I found personally was that people were uh, looking and, and hoping and, and uh, praying for something that, that they could find to help them get better because they had XYZ symptoms, but everything was normal or um, you know, more and more medication, but less and less health. And so what I found was like a good example, a metabolic syndrome, um, to be able to actually reverse it to the point where someone might be going from seven or eight medications down to one um, and losing weight and having more vitality than they did 10, 15 years ago. Um, and it's just really, really difficult to do that in traditional medicine because they don't have the tools, they don't have the time. And uh, even just something like learning about chromium and, and uh, magnesium uh, when it comes to metabolic syndrome it, it is mind blowing. It's, and it's things that we don't learn in traditional medicine. Yeah, thanks. It's, uh, I, I think I've experienced similar where you're, you're really getting to the root cause of the patient's issue and putting it into remission as opposed to covering up with medication. What about you, Heather? What, how have you been incorporating? I know you just opened a practice, so congratulations on that. Thank you so much. So um, yeah, like Lisa, I've been a nurse for 30 years. May will be 30 years. Um, and I've been a nurse practitioner for 19. I've worked in pretty much every area of medicine that there is. Um, 10 years ago, I started studying functional medicine because of, I actually took Levaquin, popped my tendon in my foot and subsequently had one health problem after another. And that led me to really starting to study mitochondrial disease and all of these things that were not mainstream, you know, medicine. And I realized just like Lisa was saying, you know, all these people are out there and they have these diagnoses of fibromyalgia or whatever it is, all their labs look normal. Their doctors are all saying, you know, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you, but there are all these underlying, um, you know, conditions that can easily be treated if you look at the root cause. And so when I came, we were stationed in Germany for eight years with the military. When my husband retired, I knew I did not and could not go back to um, that kind of practicing. And I really just wanted to help people who had nowhere else to turn. And so I knew when I started my practice here in Tampa that I really wanted to focus on functional medicine and um, getting to the root cause of the illness and helping these people reverse their illnesses rather than giving them you know, more medication or putting a Band-Aid on it. And I know your practice has been going really well so far. You just opened and tell me about the demand that you've experienced there. So I actually started practicing out of a room in another office in 2018. And within three months, um, my practice exploded. Um, we, I was already looking for property three months later saying that there's just no way I can function out of this one room. I need help, I need more space. <laughs> So um, really started foc focusing on um, helping people lose weight, of course, and um, with their diets and exercise and then bioidentical hormones and just really helping people feel better. I got such great results, no marketing, it just spread yeah. by word of mouth. And so now I have my own practice where I actually employ two nurses and massage therapists and three physicians. Wow, wow. amazing. Good for you. And I'll say, you know, it's everybody does it differently, but I had the same experience when I started practicing functional medicine. I had um, just referral after referral because of the results I was getting for people. And that speaks so much better than having to advertise. I literally haven't spent any money on advertising since I think my very first newsletter, I think I said, and I haven't really sent any since. I'm a little afraid to because uh, I, I can't keep up with the demand. So, um, so good for you. Um, Jean, I know you're, you're implementing it into your practice as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I have, a, you know, um, I've also been in practice for almost 30 years um, and sort of came to functional medicine a few years ago. Um, and I, I have sort of a little bit different. I have, a, as I said, a, a small consulting practice, but I, um, I really integrate this into primary care. And I think, you know, that's what I love um, uh, is primary care. And I found that, um, you know, using baby steps, it's not easy, but um, being able to, you know, I think the thing that Tracy has taught, I think the unique thing about her program 
is to teach the interconnectedness of all things right. and sort of the, the, the hormone soup and the dance of the hormones, that kind of thing. Um, and being able to educate people about, you know, the person in front of me with a mood disorder about, you know, the health of the gut um, and how that affects nutrient absorption and then neurotransmitters and hormones and how that affects moods and be able to educate. Um, and I find people very receptive to that. Um, and, uh, you know, as a, in an urban uh, health center, we don't, I don't use any fancy labs or fancy um, supplements, you know, and I think um, Tracy really focuses on the foundational and I, um, uh, that's what I do. Um, I, uh, you know, I've learned from Tracy really how to interpret functional medicine labs, uh, how to interpret um, routine primary care labs for functional right. medicine lens, you know, so, you know, for instance, Huge. somebody's shock cost may be um, a little bit low and maybe that's reflected on their zinc status or, um, you know, their white blood cell count is low normal, um, maybe that's indicative of a sort of a chronic smoldering infection um, that I can begin to look for. And this isn't something that I learned in medical school, right? So this is things that I've learned through, through functional medicine and a lot through Tracy's courses um, in, her, in her lab courses and her supplement courses, which was super, super helpful for me in primary care. Again, we don't use a lot of fancy supplements, you know, foundational lifestyle, diet. Um, you know, Tracy teaches coaching and I, I do coaching with my, my patients a lot, you know, on the phone or in the clinic. I have people come back frequently. Um, so far insurance isn't balking at that. Um, but, uh, you know, getting people on foundational things like, you know, magnesium, vitamin D, um, you know, cod liver oil, zinc, things like that that are su super helpful. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, and just being able to, to approach primary care problems from a functional medicine lens has been very, very um, helpful um, for me. So that's what I'm doing. That's wonderful. Jean, and can I ask you a question? Sure. So I, I, my uh, practice, of course, is 13 and up as an, an adult nurse practitioner and with you with, as a pediatrician. Um, you know, even when I'm working with the teenagers, uh, one of the things that, that I find is that it's buying in the parent. And yes. so um, can you speak to that just a smidge uh, in the functional medicine buying in the parent, because it's really very much, I mean, we find that even all of us can say, you know, family members and colleagues and friends are going to influence whether or not you're going to follow the plan, so to speak. Yep. Um, but what does that look like as somebody that's working with younger kids? Well, you know, it's really no different than buying in the parents for just primary care generally, you know. Uh, so, okay. uh, I mean, that's what we do in, in pediatrics is you, you're working with a parent. I mean, you don't go into pediatrics if you don't want to work with parents. So, um, some parents are not interested or motivated, and you really you can't you can't you can't you can't force that. Um, but pa for parents who I, I find parents very very receptive, actually, there's a lot of um, you know people who are interested in trying to understand why their kid has ADHD, and you know you can't just just people who can afford to go to a functional medicine practice who can come see me on the side are very motivated. That's clear. Right. But just because people don't come and seek that out doesn't mean that they're not. Um, interested and you can motivate them. I mean, that's part of what Tracy teaches is, you know, how to motivate. And so, you know, I work with parents about how's your health, you know, let's make this a family affair. And, um, and I, I find that it's, you know, mostly receptive. There are people that are not, and you just have to let them kind of go. Thanks, Jean. And you know, um, Jean is talking about the School of Applied Functional Med Medicine. Tracy Harrison is the, um, educator, the lead educator and founder of the school. And actually, um, while many of us have had extensive training, um, I know Lisa and Jean also went to IFM, we've all gone to SAFM. And that's where I got my training. And while I don't have any pediatric training at all, I'm a health coach by background. Um, and I've, I've gotten the board certification in functional medicine. And I do work with children. And I will say um, it's, I've had a lot of success with it, even though I don't have any Western medicine background. And um, I know one of our um, members, Suzanne Wang, was asking about, um, in, she's interested in uh, how you apply functional medicine with pediatric patients and any resources. And I know SAFM 
we talk about some children in some of the case studies and how to work with them. And there's a lot of resources in the school to help you with that as well. And I will post in the underneath um, um, a book that I use that talks about herbs with children specifically too. So I'll give you that link after. Um, how about you, Janet? Can you t speak to how you're incorporating your practice? You're doing things a little differently. I know you, you touched on it earlier. That would be me doing things slightly differently. Um, <laughs> I, As she drives during the interview. <laughs> my middle name. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Oh, look at my speed. Um, okay, 70. Um, I came to functional medicine about five years ago. I was so frustrated with metabolic syndrome. My, my bread and butter is um, diabetes, hypertension, elevated lipids. And obesity, depression, erectile dysfunction. I was just blown away that people wanted meds. And when I put a guy on insulin and he gained 15 pounds, I tried to warn him. But he came back to see me and I said, let me see what the nutritionist is telling you. I took a look at that and I'm like, what? 65% carbohydrates? And it turns out that 240 grams of carbs is about 55 teaspoons of sugar. So that was the beginning of the revolt, uh, mutiny on the bounty behind the closed door. And I just started learning the nutrition. I signed up for the School of Applied Functional Medicine. And I just became a sponge for knowledge, mitochondria, chromium, I mean, to many Many of us have said the same thing, but once you learn this, you can't go back and you start saying to patients, I'd love to not harm you. If I can help you, that would be fabulous. So that's basically my practice now um, is working in the primary care setting and trying to use common sense, maximize, minimize, prioritize. Those are Tracy's three key phrases. So it's just such a joy to have patients say to me, you know, I think you really like me. <laughs> well, I do like you and, and you, you want to help me. So it's just been a love affair with Tracy and the school and the people I've met and the approach that I have, which is really about not harming and helping if at all possible and weaning them off of drugs that they don't need because we get to root cause analysis. So my patients are thrilled. As I say to them, it's not my life, it's your life. And they go, oh, really? I say, uh-huh. <laughs> you didn't get the memo. It's not about me, it's about you. You know, Janet, I love that. And um, I know Janet is not tuning her own horn even enough with this because she, um, she works for a big company and her patient ratings are through the roof since she started incorporating the functional medicine into her practice. Um, she really is doing it within a Western medicine model, an insurance model, and she's rocking it and killing it. And I'm trying to get her to do more in my practice, but she's a little busy. <laughs> I'm, coming. I'm coming. Let me let me get through COVID. <laughs> I know, really, exactly. All right. Well, um, anyway, can you guys also tell me what has been your greatest impact? overall with your patients, if you want to talk about a specific case you worked on or just in general, either way is fine. Lisa, go ahead and tell us. Well, I already referenced metabolic syndrome is, is it's a completely different game. When you have functional medicine under your belt, you can literally reverse it to the point of potentially maybe no medicine, but even if it's just one um, medication that's not altering other things, you know, um, or reducing quality of life, so to speak. Um, in the maximizes is, is is giving them everything that they can use in a daily life that may not be a supplement. It might be stress reduction. It might be you know teaching them what food is all about, um, and it's it's t t giving them the uh, meeting them where they are, uh, which is huge. Uh, I would say uh, you know the bowels is another one. So I I actually got I should have uh, pulled it up before today. I got a notification a portal message from somebody just yesterday that said for the first time in 10 years, 10 years, first time in 10 years that she hasn't had bloating, belching, and abdominal pain. 10 years. 
and she's going to the bathroom every day and she doesn't understand how that's happening. But I'm not going to change anything because everything you've told me to do. And like Janet said, it's, it's me just sharing and empowering the patient. Did you know this? Did you understand this? Showing them the interconnectedness, showing them that what they're doing, this, this, and this, it might be one thing, it might be four things, helps their body to function better. And that's what the functional medicine comes in, right? Functional, op optim optimal function of the body. Um, and then to have her being able to go to the bathroom every day. She was going two or three times a week and she had abdominal pain and bloating every single day for 10 years. Hmm. Um, and then RA is another one. I've had two or three patients that have, were on mul super high doses of um, injectables, you know, IV therapy, um, plus multiple medications. And down one of them is still on IV therapy, but instead of every two weeks, it's every eight weeks. And she has no pain whatsoever. Um, right. And so these people that are, um, that their quality of life is lower is now higher. And it's not because anything that's um, the other, the other practitioners were doing wrong, so to speak. It's just that they may not have the tools or the time. And so functional medicine offers that and you can incorporate it into regular medicine like Janet and Jean are doing. It's amazing. The nutrients yeah. alone to, to, to have the information on nutrient intricacies in our body, how they work with each other, you know, people are just downing zinc right now because of COVID and they have no idea that it's altering their copper, right? This is huge. People need to understand you just can't take one supplement without another. They're downing down vitamin D or A because they read somewhere that they need to do that, but their magnesium is now dropping lower and it's going to make them sicker. So these are the kind of things that functional medicine teaches us and we are able to share with the patient so that they know it and understand it and they can own it instead of us teaching them and holding their hand the whole time. I love that, Lisa. And I will say, um, I know you work with a lot of autoimmune diseases too, and you've had some remarkable turnarounds with that. And I just want to say that right now, I feel like I can help anybody with any situation, like anything that comes to me, any chronic pain dynamic, any kind of autoimmune disease, you know, even depression, anxiety, ADD, headaches, migraines, you know, um, anything, gastrointestinal hormones. And I, you know, I feel like I'm in, just in this position where it's almost too easy to fix. And it's just, it just drives me crazy. I don't know if it's always easy. Covering. I don't want to jump in there. I don't know about you guys, but it's not always easy. It's, it might well, be, you know, the cumulative effect of what we're doing day, you know, if they're going to, if they're going to put their piece in, as Janet said, if they're going to be the ones that are responsible and, and really kind of put their work in, um, it does work. It might take three months. It might take three years, right. but it if definitely they've been takes sick time. Forever, you know, they're, and they have to understand that. Um, it, you know, their body is a cumulative um, uh, of effect of what we're doing on a daily basis. And I tell everybody, you know, your bank account is your health. So you're either putting something into to deposit or you're putting something, taking something out as a withdrawal. Right. No, and it does definitely take more time for sure. But I will say um, one of the things that I love that, that SFM teaches anyway is rapid relief. So we find an area that we can really help somebody that is struggling, like let's say acid reflux or someone who is struggling with migraines, something that we know is a quick fix that we can help them with right away. And then they come back and say, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. What else can I help me with? And then you can really work, take the time to work with the really deep issues. Right. Um, so Heather, tell us about you. What about, um, do you have any specific cases that you want to talk about or anything in general you want to talk about? What's your success with this? Well, um, like you were saying, Jody, I, you know, I'm still taking classes. So I was able to use my knowledge from the first classes that I took right into my practice. And I mean, I am, I have a cash pay practice. So I like to think that the patients who come to me are highly motivated already because they're paying cash. So I have, you know, kind of a captive audience. And so this week I talked with um, a lady that I started working with just a month ago and I, it's funny because people are like, well, what's your like favorite person to work with? Like, what's your favorite client? And I, I'm like, I love like a woman in her 50s, 60s. That's just a wreck, a wreck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, I'm has, coming, I'm coming. <laughs> she's driving to you now. <laughs> so that's why I'm so attracted to you, Janet. Um, yeah, so just the, yeah. the patient, you know, who has like the symptom sheet is, you know, fives, fives, fives all the way down. And you're like, holy mackerel, like, where I, I probably at some point in my career would have been like, where do I start? But now I'm like, so excited. I'm like, they have insomnia and they have, you know, <laughs> chronic fatigue. They don't want to get out of bed. Their anxiety's off the chart. They're depressed, you know, um, bowel problems. You know, I have diarrhea 15 times a day. Like these things that are, you know, panic attacks, like they can't go out in public. Like their lives are just, they're not living their lives. 
and they come to me and this is this is a woman i talked to with this week carol and she's in her 50s and she was just i mean symptoms off the chart and i said look let's start here let's do these things like you were saying you prioritize find those areas that you know you can make a difference in right away come back in a month and this week she said i feel amazing you saved my life this is a miracle i had no idea that i could feel this great and you're just thinking you know i just got her on some vitamin d you know and <laughs> did a few small things like we're just getting started you have no right. idea so I, I see that a lot and even just with routine labs like you were saying i don't do a whole lot of fancy labs but you know i have patients who come to me with panic attacks and depression and anxiety and i find out their their vitamin d is nine i'm thinking no wonder you feel horrible or, you know, just little things that you can do that really make a big difference. Absolutely. What about you, Jean? Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would echo, you know, uh, Lisa, what you said about it, it takes time um, and, uh, and baby steps. You know, so I, I, I'm, I'm happy when I've made some progress, baby steps progress. Um, you know, I, it's, again, uh, primary care is, um, there are a lot of primary care problems that are you know, very, um, uh, functional medicine is very helpful for them, you know, just things like, um, you know, asthma, eczema, ADHD, migraines that we see, PCOS, oh my goodness, you know, being able to look at PCOS from its sort of totally. inflammatory framework, you know, metabolic dysregulation and helping, um, you know, I have a teenager that I'm working with her, balancing her, her, you know, her hormones through glycemic regulation, as opposed to just writing a prescription for OCPs and calling it a day. Awesome. Um, you know, bacterial vaginosis, you know, really educating these teenagers about um, the health of their gut so that we can help rebalance their vaginal microbiome and not just throw flagell at it and hope it doesn't come back. Um, you know, eczema, you know, just, you know, small, um, but, you know, sustained um, improvements in kids with eczema just by getting them off of dairy, um, you know, and, and just being able to educate. I think I spend, you know, I only get 15 minutes per patient, if you can imagine, but, you know, 14 of that is educating, you know, talking about and having them, you know, uh, learn just a little bit about the root causes. And I think, um, um, you know, so those are, those are my successes. And I, I feel, um, I think it's just, it's, it's a challenge to integrate into primary care, I will say that. Um, but it's really rewarding, even bec maybe because of that, um, when, when, it's, when it works. So I think, um, so that's my experience. Wonderful. The PCOS Jana, piece is huge. I use that all the time as well. I've had huge results with functional medicine through PC, with PCOS. And boy, is it rampant too. Huh? Huge. Yeah. And I'll say um, some of the tips, um, you know, functional medicine as, you know, we, we've both done the IFM and the SAFM. Um, the application piece again um, was like, oh, I can totally do this between two different things. It was a little bit clearer um, with some of the deep dive courses that are offered differently through the SAFM program. And I will just say one last thing about um, when I'm stuck with a patient, you know, I, I, I found that the SAFM uh, website, being having access to that is super helpful. Oh, the Facebook page, what you mean? The, yeah what next step to take, you know, there's always some resources there for me. Um, uh, it's very helpful. So you don't feel alone. I'm not out there by myself. I really like I have a right. uh, support. Exactly. Uh, I, I got to tell you guys, um, just so uh, you guys understand what, um, what they were just talking about. There are, I think 17, I'll share my screen very quickly with you all. Um, 17, uh, deep dive clinical courses from which to choose, just so you guys understand this, if anyone's interested. Um, but these are, these are some of them, and you choose some each semester. Uh, you can always take additional courses too, and then you get all the foundational courses as well. But I just wanted to show you that if you're specializing in hormones, for example, if you're an endocrinologist or you're studying or you're working with hormones, you can take the hormones demystified class, Right here, you can take the reversing metabolic dysfunction class. That's, you know, obviously insulin's a hormone. You can take the thyroid and adrenal solutions That's class. Awesome. So, so, there's, um, so you can really specialize and, and you know, customize your semester. Um, and then, of course, there's foundational courses. And then Jean was talking about the, um, there's both live coaching calls where you can get on with your peers and review a case study 
and chime in and ask live questions. See, this is where you really learn how to use the functional medicine in your practice. Um, Janet, give us, oh. uh, give us some cases that you've worked with or something in general that you'd like to oh, discuss. Oh, gosh. This, so, um, number one, the thyroid. I've always hated the thyroid. Hated. Scared of it. <laughs> Didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to interpret. Just send them to endocrinology. So I started doing a, 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 an experiment. Every patient who had an elevated TSH, um, who had antibodies, who was tired and sluggish and blah, 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 I would say go gluten-free and dairy-free and go see endocrinology. I'd tell them about the whole 30 and go see endocrinology in about six weeks. And about 98% of them, I probably did this for 10 people, by the time they got to endocrinology, all their labs were perfect. They felt great, and the endocrinologist was like, why did you send them? I thought, I really wanted to say, to torture you, to show you that I know what I'm doing, and if you just make them gluten-free and dairy-free and get some sleep and some kombucha and a little bit of smidge of magnesium, it was just incredible. And so now I don't send them to the endocrine because they don't need to go, and I explained to them my, how I do this. So that's number one. Number two, and I might even cry, but I'm trying to drive. Um, I had a young man about a month ago who came in for a rash, and his rash was, oh, my gas light's on. Hang on. Um, <laughs> okay, I got it. When it rains, it pours. So this guy, he came in for a rash, and I said, where's your rash? And he just looked at me, and he's a beautiful, handsome man with a... a um, he's biracial. His skin tone is just a lovely, lovely, moderately darker skin. And he pulls up his 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 Johnny, and he says, "I'm so embarrassed." And what he had was basically vitiligo or no pigment on his penis. And he had gone to a doctor. He'd gone to a tattoo artist who had tattooed in some some brownish color to try and fill in his spot. Oh, boy. Tattooed, yes. That we're talking needles into the penis. And he wanted me to tell him that it was a good idea for him to see a plastic surgeon for easily four or $5,000 because he was going to have skin grafts done to take skin that had the right pigment and cover the, the whitish spots. And I was literally tears in my eyes, I looked at him and I just said, I don't know how you found me today. I don't know how I found you, but I need to show you the work of my colleague, Jody Franklin. And I pulled up pictures of what I call vitiligo, which was lack of pigment and, and how they had repigmented. The guy started to sob. And I just hugged him and I said, you don't need to go see that surgeon. Nope, save you $5,000. I don't want you having those needles put into this very precious part of your body that has a lot of nerve endings. He said, I know. <laughs> and I said, just, if you can just work with me, we're gonna work on basically helping your body to stop being, it's called autoimmune. And I promise you, I can help you. Jody can help you. and. I spent a long time with him. People are knocking on the door. What are you doing in there? I'd say, I'm fine. I'm fine. Go away, please. And it was probably one of the, it just, I just thought, wait till I tell Tracy, wait till I tell everybody about this incredible opportunity to, to, to make things so different and to help him heal. And of course, now that we have COVID, we can't see patients in the office. And so I thought, how do I do a telehealth visit with this penis? I can't do that. <laughs> but I'm going to think of something. So that's my, my most exciting. And a guy who had MS who came in with a car accident. So that's even why I came in. And I asked him about what he ate. He ate Cheetos and Diet Coke. And I said, you know. Terry Walls is this amazing woman with multiple sclerosis. 
you might want to look at her video and consider the whole 30, which is gluten and dairy free. Three months later, I get an email, dear Janet, thank you so much. I've lost 30 pounds. I can't believe you spent the time with me. I came in for the car accident, but you just had to tell me about this and I owe my life to you, blah, blah, blah. So that's two. There's more, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, great stories, Janet. And I, I will say, um, I'll just show you guys the, the picture that Janet shared with, she asked me for a copy of this, but um, this is one of my clients. I had a client come to me about four years ago with vitiligo and within eight months, we were able to get significant pigment back on her skin and she posted it and it went kind of viral. And I actually, since then, I've had about 45 clients that I've worked with in total that have all had vitiligo. And um, you can see this guy had some melasma and vitiligo. You can see the before and after here. There's a bunch of them on my um, testimonial page. I work with a lot of autoimmune skin conditions. It's funny because I had one myself. <laughs> Here's a guy with um, psoriatic arthritis and within five months we were able to completely reverse it. He was uh, in such pain he couldn't even tie his shoes and he couldn't work and um, he was on prednisone. And, um, and now within five months, we completely reversed it. He's off all of his medications and um, he feels great. So, um, you know, this is the power of what we can do. And this is the power that, of the things that we're doing every day with functional medicine. And I really wanna encourage you all to, to look at it seriously if you're not doing it already. And if you've done it and you're, you're dabbling in it, be more bold with it and use yes. what, you're, what you've you. learned because it works. People need you. People are desperate for us. Um, we need more practitioners doing what we're doing. Uh, we need the people that are on the front line too, but we need people that are doing what we're doing. And it would be amazing. Imagine if all of the people that are doing what we're doing and the people that are in traditional medicine um, had a collaborative um, uh, relationship instead of a them and us, because how wonderful would it be to be the person that's, I only have 15 minutes, but this is what I, I want you to start with. Go see this other person come back to me and it's going back and forth. And that's kind of Lisa's dream in the world is to stand up on a, um, you know, end pace. So those of you that are nurse practitioners an end pace stage of, you know, thousands of people and teach them five or six tips to be able to share how to incorporate this into traditional medicine and to be able to work collaboratively because patients desperately need what we are doing because the country is getting sicker and sicker and sicker and we're getting more, it's more and more expensive with medication, but we're, we're not healthier. Um, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's worse and worse. And people are dying younger and younger. Um, it, and, and so, you know, the top three uh, diseases that are killing people are, are, are completely preventable. Well said, Lisa, absolutely. And I mean, so many people, one out of four Americans is on antidepressant now. So many people are diabetic and pre-diabetic. 50% are metabolic syndrome, right. These are all things that don't have to be and uh, these hormone issues and gastrointestinal issues and chronic pain. I have people coming to me every day in chronic pain and it's just, you know, they don't even realize that this can be reversed in, in many, in most cases, I would say. Um, but if, um, so I wanna thank you guys all for coming. I know I wanna keep this, uh, keep this short today, but um, I know um, I wanted to ask just in terms of the training that's been most impactful. I know we've talked a lot about SAFM. Um, just so you guys all know, if anyone's interested in the school, um, the registration is ending April 3rd for the semester that, um, that starts April 13th. And it's a seven month, seven and a half month semester. If you don't have a lot of time, you can stretch it out over 10 and a half months. So you have more time to do it. It's not that hard and it gives you 50 CMEs per semester. So uh, it's a good bang for your buck. It's under $3,000 of paid in full, $29.94 for the semester and you get 50 CMEs. So that's a good thing. But um, I know some of you have done other training as well. So maybe just um, tell us what has been the most impactful or what training has been the most impactful in preparing you to uh, be a functional medicine practitioner, Lisa? I mean, I, I, I would have to say that I'm one of those people that is um, passionate about 100% of my training and, and my experience. I think every single day you learn, you, you, you gain ex education, experience, and, and confidence. Um, but I will say some of the things that Jean touched on about the huddle groups, the ability to go on to this community that um, SAFM offers with the number one, the application piece, but also the ability to 
go to the forum with a full case study and have multiple um, graduates or students or even Tracy uh, be able to give you that information, um, you know, to, to guide you is great. Um, you know, uh, again, you know, day to day, the information I get with the readings and other things through the school, um, it, it just seems a little bit more uh, relevant, so to speak. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and she's talking about the form. There's a couple things. You have a, a search bar, which is the deep, the clinical treasure chest where you can search anything. There's over a thousand entries in there. So if you have a patient that has diverticulitis, you know, type that in, you get, you get answers, which is great. And if not, you can go on the forum, which is a Facebook page. For the students, there's over a dozen uh, mentors on there that are answering questions every day. Tracy gets on there. So if you have a case that you're really perplexed about, you can get answers, which I love. So I always feel like if I can't figure something out, I can go to the resources of the school to figure it out. And I can take people that I don't, that I may nev have never worked with their condition before, but I know I can help them because I have the resources of the school behind me. Heather, what about you? I'm, I echo exactly what you're talking about. I, this community of practitioners that we have with SAFM is, is so great. Um, you ladies that are here and the fact that, you know, I would have never had the confidence to open my own private practice had I not. And it's not that I know everything about everything because I certainly don't. And like I said, I'm, I'm always studying. Um, but it's great to know that I have a place where I can go. And just because you present with something that maybe is not my niche, you know, a lot of practitioners have a niche when I, I really feel like SAFM has given us the knowledge and the expertise to, we don't need a niche necessarily because we know we're looking at symptoms and we know we can help anybody. And if I don't know the answer, I can go on the forum, I can, you know, do a search, I can go back in my notes and look, and I know that I've got information that I can help that person. Well said, and I think, um you know, nobody comes to you with just one issue, or they might just come to you with one issue, mm -hmm. and then you, you go through their health history, and obviously there's, there's like 10 or 12 issues staring at you. It's the four things, things they're not paying they're attention to right? causing their issue. Right. Exactly. I, exactly. I get a lot of patients who have been diagnosed with, you know, fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, and some are MS. I mean, and I'm just looking at the person saying, you know, I can definitely help you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember I had someone come to me with, uh, who just wanted to lose some weight and it turned out she was type 2 diabetes, had uh, cr chronic diarrhea to the point, I mean, for 40 years, you want to talk about gastrointestinal issues that she'd been to plenty of practitioners for and no one was able to help her and um, uh, fibromyalgia and a rash all over her skin. And I want to say two other things, she was on five or six medications. And by the time we were done, she was you know, she had lost the 20 pounds, but oh yeah, her diabetes, she no longer was diabetic. She, um, the rash was gone. Oh, her GERD, she had um, GERD, really bad um, acid reflux that was gone. And her diarrhea had completely stopped. She was having normal bowel movements for the first time in 40 years. So yeah, she got what she wanted, but she got so much more. I always call the weight loss a side effect of what we're going to do. Exactly. And that's <laughs> what I told her. It's like, yeah, that's probably maybe the last thing that happens. Right. Jean, how about you? Um, you know, I think I've already mentioned many times, you know, the, the power of uh, the Tracy's um, courses, you know, I mean, she, you can deep dive, you can go very esoteric with her information, but you can also really, she focuses on the fundamentals. And I think um, the community is, is probably one of the most important things um, that I've gotten, you know, from, from this, because it's an ongoing and I'm learning every day. I mean, I, I'm studying all the time, learning, because this is so much more information. This is a lot of new information that we're learning. You know, this isn't stuff that people have known for thousands of years. This is recent information. A lot right. of, and, um, and Tracy keeps up, you know, well, all, I mean, the IFM where I've studied, they also have a lot of good information, new information as well. Agree. But Tracy really keeps up on the literature and she's constantly giving references and resources. And so um, I think that ongoing, the ability to continue to learn um, is also, you know, a big part of it. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to piggyback on that too, Jane, um, because uh, I, I, I can't say enough about all the, the education I got and in, in, in all the people I've worked with through the years. I mean, it's all part of your experience and your confidence yeah. and your, um, but um, I will say that when you take, in my experience, in, and it may not speak to others, but when I did the IFM, it was like, okay, that module's done. And then you take the next module. And it was like, there was this, this lack of in between, this lack of 
continuous, this lack of involvement or, or community like you're talking about. And, and so even though I can't discount how amazing the school was um, and what I learned, I do think that that's the piece that, that gets me um, the passion for SAFM. Awesome. How about you, Janet? Never lacking a comment, Janet. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Paul Farmer during the HIV epidemic. And I'm just driving along here. I have 40 miles left in my gas tank. Um, <laughs> but I won't talk for 40 miles. Um, and I used to say, Paul Farmer, if there was a Jesus Christ in my life, if there was a person who truly just is so devoted and dedicated and selfless to people's health, it would be Paul Farmer. And driving along, I'm thinking, you know, I have to say that I could give Tracy Harrison that same title of, in my lifetime, a person who I've met who is equal to Paul Farmer, Tracy's in a different arena, but Tracy's love for us, for her patience, for knowledge, for science is like nothing I've ever seen. I haven't been through other schools, but I am so inspired by Tracy. And she, if Tracy is, seems kind of tough or kind of strict or makes us learn the facts and calls us on it when we don't know what we're talking about, which I'm sure I do at time to time. I love that about Tracy because there is her requirement for, it's not perfection, but it's for evidence-based, non-hocus-pocus interventions and healthcare and strategies. So I, I'm just having an aha moment as I'm driving along here, multitasking. Um, but this is a real shout out to Tracy and to this whole school integrity and just an obsession with not hurting people, helping them even better. And I'm 61. I've never been so excited to do this. You know, I'm not burnt out. COVID right now is burning all of us out. But <clears throat> For people who are losing their jobs, a lot of people are in practices, no patients are coming in, they're getting laid off, and I feel for them, but now is the time. I, I think there's a payment program that's set up through the School of Applied Functional Medicine, but now is the time to learn this and to prepare for a career for the rest of your life that is so rewarding. And you say to yourself at the end of the day, I don't think I hurt anyone today. And that's what I love, is not hurting people and not using medicines that I don't need to use and having them not need the medicine. Lavender fixes everything in my mind. <laughs> Well, actually, I do want to st step on that, too, because I have, um, I still have, there are some practitioners that are still like, oh, well, functional medicines, you know, uh, hocus pocus or whatever you just called it, um, hoaxy, and, 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 and it's just not. I mean, this is relative, evidence-based medicine um, that is uh, researched and um, utilizing it in a, in a non-harmful, only do, first do, first do no harm, um, helpful way to the patient and empowering them and to get them involved in their own health um, is, is huge. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, there, it, it's not hocus pocus uh, lav that lavender fixes everything, although it does, <laughs> does help a lot as does magnesium. Um, but, but, um, yeah, I, I think that's a huge piece of, of what I want people to come home with when it comes to functional medicine. Uh, we're passionate, obviously listen to us, but we're also passionate about making sure that we're not doing well, first, we do no harm and that we aren't doing hocus pocus, that this is medicine, um, uh, relevant, new, uh, evidence-based medicine uh, and backed by science. And so um, huge when it comes to some of what we're doing in traditional medicine is 10, 15, 20 years old. Um, it, you know, it's, it's old medicine. It's not newest. Uh, you know, the fact that people are just now learning about the microbiome in traditional medicine, we've been doing it in functional medicine for 10 years, 15 years. Right. Well, I think too, with this crisis right now, um, it's a I think we're going to be needed more than ever because I don't worry about so much about us being fine through this crisis because 
acute care in our country is amazing. It's amazing what providers amazing. can do, you know, in an acute situation. I mean, if you're having a heart attack or you get into a car accident or whatever it might be, you have an injury, our acute care system is the best in the world. But chronic care, I mean, chronic conditions affect 80% of Americans. And I just looked at the treatments even for COVID that we're doing. And I think downstream, wow, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have, you know, long-term effects from this. And we're going to be needed more than ever. Well, and this is going on for the next six to nine months, at least. So we're going to have to support um, a lot of our colleagues, but also our patients and our patients' families. Absolutely. And ter it's Terry Pinder is commenting, the current pandemic is highlighting inflammation as an acute cause of illness. And I think she's echoing what we're talking about right. here. It's all about anti-inflammatory, right? Yeah. And, and immunity, you know, immunity, everybody now is interested in immunity. And it's like, we've been talking, we preach that all the mm -hmm. time. Your gut is your immune system. It starts there. Absolutely. hundred percent. And, um, you know, uh, I love what Lisa said about the evidence-based part of it. People don't realize this. Um, and it kind of like functional medicine gets lumped into all kinds of different alternative medicine things that may not have worked for a lot of people in the past. But um, just so everybody knows, Tracy Harrison is a scientist. She has three degrees from MIT. She's a chemist by background and was in high-tech biotech for 17 years before she, and really top of the food chain career before she got into functional medicine and had a really successful functional medicine practice practice for 12 years, but she did every course at IFM. She did, and which she was very grateful for. She got to shadow Dr. Mark Hyman um, for a couple weeks, which was a huge experience for her. Um, she helped her husband overcome chronic seizures that he was having every day, and he no longer has seizures. Um, and she had a really, really successful practice with a wait list. And she researches, she's done tens of thousands of hours of research and continues to research. So before every class, she researches hundreds of, of studies and reads dozen, like a dozen books for each class. And she's constantly updating classes. So it Right, and that's one thing that's huge. I don't mean to interrupt Judy, but no, you know, sure. in, in, in education, and, and I used to educate, so, um, and I'm not saying that I, you know, before each program that I would go to NP class, I would, uh, was a instructor at three different NP and nursing programs. And so when, when you have your, you have your kind of bucket of what the semester is going to look like, and you might tweak it here and there and maybe add, but it's kind of, it, it sort of just goes year to year, unless it's been a couple of years, then you really have to dive in. But what she does is literally every single solitary semester, she updates every single thing. It's, in, it's blowing it and it's new, <laughs> awesome research. It's like, how does one person have so much time? That's amazing. She's really um, quite erudite. She's amazing. Um, but anyway, what, regardless of which program you do, I think it's important that we all look into functional medicine, getting the training, incorporating into your practice, and just go out there and do it. People need your help. Just about everybody out there has got a health issue nowadays. And I think we can all be such a blessing to so many people out there. So thank you all so much for helping me um, bring this to light to so many people out there. Uh, appreciate it. You all are um, doing great. And I love, uh, I love what you're doing in all the different ways that you do it. And um, thanks, everybody, for being part of this group. I know there are a couple questions you, maybe we could answer in the comments. Um, somebody asked about which, um, Alexis asked which EMR system you all are using. Do you want to quickly answer that? I use way? Practice Fusion. Okay. I do, I do as well. I use Practice Fusion. What about you, Jean? I use Charm. Okay. And Janet, you're in the... I'm in, I'm in Epic. I'm in a, a Western Medicine. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's a million dollar program. So those of us with cash practices yeah. that are tiny, we don't pay for that. <laughs> I bought epic for my system. All right, I'm at, the gas, I'm at the gas station. I'm oh, safe. good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Have fun in Vermont. Take care, you all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks again so for all of you in the front line. Be well. Be right. safe. Love you. Yeah. Love Thanks, you everybody. All. Bye. Bye. Bye.